Hi, this is Brother Richard. And today, we're continuing with our lesson series, Prototokens Mystery. This will be part 388. We're continuing with our lesson title, Reality Transit, part 7. Now, we were touching on Isaiah 45, Isaiah verse 7. 45, verse 7. <coughs> and God takes responsibility for everything. Amen. He leaves nothing out. Does what that we include find, my mistakes? <laughs> all of our mistakes. <laughs> what we find in verse 7, he says, I form the light, I create darkness. Create darkness, create. bara. Okay. I make peace and create evil, ra. I, the Lord, do all these things. So what we find here, looking at God as a creator, we find God is a life giver. He can, keep, can only create positive. Darkness is a negative, which he, he calls adversity. But he takes credit for it coming into existence. It comes into existence not as a positive act okay. that he has initiated. Right. It comes into existence as a result of something that has taken place that resulted in this condition, which he established would be the result of the actions right. taking place. So you're responding to Brace yesterday saying, does he take credit for it? Yes, that's, he, what, that's what we're talking yes, about. Okay. Yes, okay. yes, and he does. Yes. He does. This is an act of creation. Right. But it is not a direct creation. He does not speak darkness into being. No. He removes he light, light to make it so. Yes, yeah. exactly. So we still stay with the concept of the Isaiah 45 7 darkness being a condition within a reality. And the Genesis 1. Five darkness being a new reality as a result of light being removed from it. Well, no, it's the same thing. It's okay. the same word, Hosek. Okay. But we look at it from the standpoint of it being, coming into being, is directly due to God. <clears throat> Everything that happens is a result of his master plan. So, because I'm a little bit slow, so you forgive me. Define the difference between those two. Between the Genesis 1 and, and the Isaiah, Isaiah 47? 47. Yes. Since they're both called Hosek and they're both darkness. Well, it has to do with how they come into being. One basically has to do with what took place as a result of the Luciferian revolt. Okay. The light was twisted away and this was the result. That's Genesis 1. The second has to do with the same element being used, he brings it into into existence as a form of judgment on evil, on iniquity, on people ult ultimately residing in this state of existence. Right. What I was getting to is, does he do what you've just said in Isaiah 45.7? Mm -hmm. Because it's already there. Yes. Right. Yes. He's saying he brings it into other he states. Has, gotcha. He has a use for it to, now. For his right. plan. Along with evil, right. right? But the understanding is, had um, Lucifer not fallen, and I should say, had Lucifer not encountered the darkness element, is really what I, I should say, mm -hmm. then there would be no need for the law to do. Right. Everything that is the secondary creation is created so that the conditions of darkness, death, uh, uh, lack, all of this could exist, because it can't exist in primary creation. Sure. That's why secondary creation is going to go out of existence, ultimately. I hope uh, Brother Bracey will accept Brother Richard's apology. Yes. I'll, well, I'll okay, under one condition. Let's hear it. That you, you provide more spiritual comprehension for myself, which means the strong need and then the understanding thereof. Praise the Lord. <coughs> I shall endeavor to do so. Okay, and so then I will transfer, I'll, set, I'll get the paperwork in order for a proper uh, receiving your apology. <laughs> okay, we'll have Chris's lawyers come over tomorrow. No problem, we'll take to care of it. Thank All you, right. sir. Okay, thank you. 
scripture teaches two great realities exist side by side. One of darkness and one of light. Two states of existence. Genesis, the first chapter, verse 3 to 4. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Why did he divide the light from the darkness? Because the light was good and the darkness was adversity. <clears throat> Which brings us into a whole new comprehension of things. The thought crosses my mind, and I'm, I'm not sure if this is a place to ask it, but mm -hmm. does the new light uh, represent an improvement of the original light? Does it represent an improvement? Mm. In quality, in intensity, in any, any, any area? Um, what I'm saying is, does the light in Genesis yes. 1, 1 Yes, because the original light is temporal. The light that okay. is replacing it is, is eter eternal. It's spoken right, into existence. Right. The first point. one was and it was constructed. Great point. So yeah, it has to be. So had it, if, if a Protodicus being was able to see Genesis 1-1, the events of that, and then Genesis 1-5, which is what you're referring to now, that being would see a pronounced difference in the quality, the density, the frequency of the yes. light. Right. Yes, because the first light was never, was never pronounced good. Okay. <clears throat> Which brings us to the next principle. Hey, how say, Mr. Johnson? Yes, how does he bring, How did he bring the first version of light into existence? It was constructed. By the angels or him? By him. By him. So what components did he use to, to, to build it? He would manifest it as an element, just like he manifested the secondary creation. He brings it into being out of nothing, but he doesn't speak it into being. He constructed it into being. How he does it doesn't say. Now, are you, yeah. are you talking about specifically the light of the second, uh, secondary creation or the entire secondary creation itself? Well, the light was part of the entire secondary creation. Okay, so then. It was right. integral to the secondary so, okay. creation. So, Mr. Jones, if he, if he brought it together, it was, is it not a glory, glorious light? Oh, it yes. Has, it's been built? Yes, definitely. Okay, Most of that because it talks about the dawn star sang, and the sons of God shouted. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, shouted for joy. Mm -hmm. It was beautiful. But God knew it was only going to be temporary. Mm -hmm. The thing of it is, see, these angels exist in, in a realm which is what consisted of light. Yes. Okay. Yes. So when this temporary light is brought together. They, of course, they, they applaud, but they've been existing in light for, you know, who knows how long before the temporary light was brought into existence. Yes. So it's, it, it's a, I'm sorry for interrupting. No, that's okay. The last, the, the, the questions just start compounding, so let's get back to the lesson. That's okay, but in, uh, uh, in, in uh, addition to what you're asking, the reason I believe that they applauded it was because anything that the creator does is a piece of masterwork. Right. And Absolutely. they were so impressed that this was how, how they reacted to it. You said yesterday that everything he creates is considered a paradise. Yes. Right. So that makes perfect sense. A state of perfection. Sure. But let's go on. <clears throat> everything he creates has a purpose. Yes. 
uh, <coughs> Scripture indicates <coughs> the light reality and everything in it is spiritual. There is nothing on the physical plateau in the light reality. The darkness reality has spiritual and physical states of density which affect its inhabitants, particularly the darkness. The, the density of the darkness is pronounced and when it comes in contact with the inhabitants, it has an effect. We see this in the scripture. It talks about what's called thick darkness, gross darkness. Um, <clears throat> it affects not only the humans, it affects the angelic intelligences as well. The, intelligent, the angelic intelligence can manipulate darkness to a certain, pers uh, uh, a certain perspective <clears throat> but they themselves can be imprisoned by darkness. So we see a stratified state of existence in the darkness reality. Mm -hmm. So I presume this is why you've said previously that <clears throat> the human, the physical human, the Genesis 2 human, is not a real being, not a pure being, because he comes from a spirit which was created in purity, had and fallen, is placed into a physical form within a fallen environment, mm -hmm. and which at some point later on that physical form falls. Mm -hmm. So we're understanding that's the reason why the human is not a pure being. Yes. Okay. He, he is, um, <coughs> would, be con would be considered artificial, mm -hmm. because no other beings are created like that. Like that, right. Uh, they're created as a unit and uh, <clears throat> that's the way they that's the way they manifest as a unit the human race put together is uh, components the spirit the physical matching and in that respect ultimately separating that, that's not any other being that right would, but what, what, I, what, I, what I'm bringing out is that every other being that was matter at the point that it was created Nothing, it hadn't fallen. It, the, the being hadn't fallen. Yes. The secondary creation hadn't fallen. Yes. So everything was pure at that point. So yes. the only thing that was fallen is the human. Well, he, he wasn't created fallen. No, but the moment he stepped into the Genesis 2 form, mm -hmm. the was, environment was fallen. No. No, the environment was purified. It was a paradise. Okay. This fall you're, you're, made you're, it. You're, fall. you're referring to, let me call it the, the garden. Everything around that, the loose had already fallen by that point. Well, from what the scripture is saying, it was confined even if it was falling. Okay. But when man sinned, the whole thing went, right. went south. Right. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, what we find, man himself, is uh, a curiosity because the way he's put together was not a design of Elohim, or even a design of YHVH. It was uh, the result of a <clears throat> particular circumstance in which YHVH acquiesced to put this man together to meet this particular need. Mm. Something like a patchwork doll. Yeah. yeah. Yes. And woman too. Yeah. Being built. <clears throat> uh, let's go on. <clears throat> So we said that the darkness reality has a spiritual quality and a physical quality to it. And these spiritual and physical qualities have <coughs> states of density. <coughs> Isaiah 60, verse 2. Am I right in understanding that only humans are affected by gross darkness? Excuse me, only humans cannot detect gross darkness. Yes. Hmm. The humans are <clears throat> totally uh, the victims of darkness. Yes. <coughs> <coughs> Isaiah 
the uh, the Luciferians are also victims, but they um, they have an idea of what's going on because they can affect their own environment, even though it's in darkness. Yeah, they're not aware of their victimhood. To the level of that, at the lower levels, they they're the masters of darkness. Right. At the level of Lucifer, when he got corrupted, no. no. <clears throat> Isaiah 60, <clears throat> verse 2. For behold, the darkness, the darkness, Hosek, mm -hmm. shall cover the earth, shall cover the earth. So it's a future time from Isaiah. And gross darkness, the people, shall affect the people. <clears throat> but the Lord shall arise upon thee in his glory, light, shall be seen upon these. It's talking about events that take place in which the darkness <coughs> of the darkness reality is an aspect of it that is going to manifest and affect man in man's environment. Now we find a, there is a <coughs> relationship between uh, darkness levels and iniquity levels. Paul talks about in 2 Thessalonians, the mystery of iniquity already works. Mm. <clears throat> iniquity is connected wholesale with darkness. So this um, darkness covering the earth at this point, verse 2, should you understand that that's the beginning of Soros mm -hmm. when the second, uh, sorry, the fourth empire rises. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's also the mystery of iniquity. Mr. Jones. <coughs> yes. It's only a mystery to the humans, right? All the other beings know about iniquity? To a level. <clears throat> but not completely. Only God knows the fullness of it. Right. Because God uses iniquity <clears throat> to bring the intelligences into captivity by their own initiations. But the Psalm 62 verse 5 passage refers purely to humans. Every other being mm -hmm. has some level of understanding of yes. what's going on. <coughs> yes. Mm. Yes. But they, uh, <coughs> the essence, as a matter of fact, we're going to take a look at this. Um, on the level of YHVH, okay. we want to take a look at something interesting that the scripture talks about him. Scripture <coughs> indicates those on the level of YHVH, darkness is not seen as darkness. It has no limiting influence. So YHVH can use the full range of all darkness is at his disposal. Turn to Exodus 14, verses 19 to 20. <coughs> And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and stood behind them. The angel's in the pillar of the cloud. And it, the pillar of the cloud, became, came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel. And it was a cloud and darkness to them, talking about the Egyptians, but it gave light by night to these, talking about the Israelites. So the one came not near the other all the night. So YHVH is able to take the darkness element and use it as darkness and as light. Is this the same <coughs> level or intensity of darkness that is seen or used, I should say, by YHVH against the Egyptians when they're in their houses, they can't move? Uh, but a lesser degree. Right, so I assume what I've just said to be gross darkness and this just being darkness. Mm -hmm. Right. He can also manipulate the level of darkness, make it an intense or make it less. Okay. <coughs> uh, 
the scripture talks about him consistently being in um, a position in which he uh, manipulates the element of darkness. And I believe he does that <clears throat> to a great degree uh, when he's given the ability to judge these guys. Like when he talks about, I'm going to put a judgment on the gods of Egypt. I right. believe he uses the darkness yes. element to wrap them up and imprison them with it. Now we see how Elohim looks at darkness. Turn to uh, Psalms 139, <coughs> verse 12. Yea, the darkness hideth not from thee, but the night shineth as the day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee. So, Elohim is uh, not at all affected by, YGH would be more affected than Elohim, and YGH isn't affected at all. Mm. <coughs> YGH can discern the darkness levels, but Elohim, the darkness and the light, look the same. They both shine. And in that respect, <clears throat> we find that they monitor this darkness reality. The next principle. <clears throat> Scripture indicates that Elohim knows <clears throat> that darkness is a reality that brings destruction to all that come in contact with it, human and non-human. <clears throat> Genesis 1.5, he calls the darkness Layla, which is adversity. He calls the darkness what it is, an adversity reality, an adversity state of existence in which everybody that is in it is captive to it. Hmm to one degree or another. <clears throat> now, Scripture indicates those who do not have light or pursue light in this darkness reality will have their life and their vitality consumed by it. The darkness reality that we live in will ultimately consume our life if we do not pursue light as Christians. The humans, those that are not saved, they're going to go by the way anyway. Their vitality is consistently being consumed by the darkness. Christians have the advantage of having light within them, being a light. But if they do not pursue light, the darkness is going to envelop them also and ultimately consume them. Matthew 18. Mr. Jones, hang on Matthew a 13. Okay. Yes. No. Finding the darkness influence is a result of pursuing light, which is the kingdom. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of light. Uh, before you go to Matthew, turn to Colossians, first chapter. Colossians, the first. 
Colossians, the first chapter, verses 12 down to verse 13. Everybody there? Okay. Yeah. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet or fit to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. He has made us fit to do that through the new birth. <clears throat> we become creatures of light in the realm of light, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and have translated us into the kingdom of his dear son so spiritually when you're born again you're taken from the darkness reality spiritually into the light reality which is standing side by side with it spiritually born a being of light in that respect we are then to engage in a life pursuing light if we don't pursue light, we're going to be brought, brought into adversity by the darkness element in which the physical lives in. If you don't pursue the spiritual, the physical is going to take over. If physical takes over, you're going to go down to the, con the con conditions of the physical. Even though, because you're born again, well, it has to be answered, yes. 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 Now turn to Matthew, 13th chapter. I'm going to start verse 12. <clears throat> For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. Hath what? Light. And he shall have more abundance. Abundance what? Light. For whosoever hath not, in other words, does not pursue, from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Now notice what he goes on to say. Therefore, speak I to them in parables, because they seeing, see not, hearing, they hear not, Neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which says, By hearing you shall hear and shall not understand, seeing you shall see and not perceive, for this people's heart is wax gross, and the ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed, lest at any time they should see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them they are in darkness why because they do not they cease to pursue light darkness will overtake the individual and pull him into the life of darkness so that's how we see the fallen church leader take T.D. Jakes for example sure how he looked before mm -hmm. how he looks now same person. Well, he never was fully in light to begin with. But he has moved further into darkness than he was before. Mm -hmm. The point I was making is that you can detect the difference. If, of course, you are in light. It's more like the darkness is affecting him that was in him from the beginning. More. Okay. That's a great point. Okay. Let's take a look at some situations that illustrate this point. Turn to Proverbs 20, verse 27.
the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, light, searching all the inward parts of the body. Everybody, whether you're saved or unsaved, you're, you are motivated, you are living because you have the spark of light in you. It's the light of God. And this is the light that gives the ability of the individual Adamic being to live. <clears throat> Unsaved people have light. Saved people have greater light. Both have light. Both are to pursue. The unsaved is to get saved so he can have the light of eternity, not the light of temporality. The saved is to increase his light so he can prepare himself for life and eternity. But in either case, if the individual does not pursue light, he is going to be overtaken by darkness and ultimately his candle is going to go out. Turn to Proverbs 24, verse 20. For there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. You're going to see, you see throughout <clears throat> evil, a person whose life has been characterized by evil, darkness, as they progress, their light gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. Case in point, Mr. Biden. Mm. This light's going out. Yeah. Uh, Hillary, yes. light's going out. Bill, the light's going out. Sure. God dims the light, preparing them for entrance into eternity. Total darkness. Christians, lights get dimmer and dimmer and dimmer, according to the Lord. If they don't pursue light, their understanding is affected, their commitment is affected, the whole personification of a child of light weakens precipitously until they become dominated by the darkness element. Does the tear have any comprehension that as his light goes out, he will be in complete darkness? No. He has none whatsoever. No, he's dominated by darkness from the beginning. You agree, but he has no idea that when that light is that darkness completely takes over, he will be in complete darkness from that point on. He has he has no comprehension at all of that. Right. Because you cannot comprehend objectively if you're in darkness. Okay. Uh, Jesus made a statement about that to, to the tares of his time. Mm -hmm. He says, You can't understand my word because you're in darkness. of your father the devil, who's placed you in darkness. Mm -hmm. Job 21, verse How oft is the candle of the wicked put out? And how oft cometh their destruction upon them? God distributeth sorrows in his anger. So they live in darkness. They never become free of darkness. And ultimately, they become a denizen of darkness. Turn to Ecclesiastes, the ninth chapter. Verse 4 to 6. <clears throat> 
For to him that is joined to all the living, there is hope. For a living dog is better than a dead lion. Because if you're living, you have the spark of life. There's always hope. You can illuminate that spark and get it greater and greater and greater. Once the spark goes out, that's the end of it. As he goes on to say, For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. The memory of them is forgotten. It means that they lose comprehension of what was formerly life to them in all its aspects. They, they go totally into darkness. Notice what it goes on to say. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. <clears throat> so they lose even the the uh, carnal nature that they once had on earth, where they could become angry, or they could become um, sad, or experience joy, grief, none of that. that. Only a being with light within him can experience this type of characteristic. These, these become totally devoid of any ability to experience emotion, experience what was once a desire they have no desire whatsoever they're mm. just creatures totally it's like the darkness in them they are their mind is a void they don't have the capacity to comprehend ultimately it's all driven from them life is driven from them and they become a denizen of darkness now you're talking about living your desires of the living, I should say. Mm -hmm. The memory still exists for them. Yes, the in, a, in a certain degree. Okay, okay, to a certain degree. The rich man desires to cool his tongue, for example. He remembers that he has brothers. Yes. That's the limitations that we're talking about. Each memory that they are allowed to have is a torment. Not a pleasant. Or oh, I, I, whatever you think about, if you have something to think about, it torments you in this mm. region. And that's part of the torment package. Yes. Very interesting. Yes. Mr. Jump. Yes, sir. Okay, let me ask you. The rich man asks for Abraham to dip his, his finger in water and, and touch it. He knows a drip on his tongue is not going to do anything in his condition. He needs a drink of water at some substantial level, mm. but he asks for a drip. Or so is he trying to be humble? What's, what's he doing? Yes. You notice he calls him Father Abraham. Yes. He would have never said that in life. Mm -hmm. The first thing that happens when they had eternity, no matter how evil and prideful they were on earth, there's a scripture, I'm going to try to look up uh, if I can, it talks about they are humbled immediately when they, uh, when they, become, when they come into the torment regions of hell. Pride is driven away, arrogance, nothing of that remains. So he's at a point now where he's taken over the mindset of a beggar. It's part of his torment. Just give me a crumb. In his life, he never thought about asking for a crumb. He did, would demand that, you know, things that pertain to his stature in life. No, here he's totally humble. It's part of the judgment that he is now going to undergo. Mm. So no pleasant thoughts are allowed? No. No. Every thought is a torment. And it's everything he says. For I'm tormented in this flame. Right. He can't raise his comprehension to a point where there is any enjoyment or satisfaction at all. All so hope is gone. So at that point, they know that that is their lot for eternity. Yes, it's part of the law of sin and death. I can't comprehend. They're going to experience uh, adversity, torment. That's all they're going to experience. 
that's why it talks about uh, the, 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 there's no hope for them. You read that. Um, Paul talks about Second Thess First Thessalonians four. Those that die, they die without hope if they're not saved. And when they get to the torment regions, they understand there's no hope for them. No way for them to escape. There's nothing they can do. They're totally uh, victims of the conditions of darkness. And those conditions are basically formed by the life that the individual lived. Mr. Jones. Yes, sir. What if a Christian, a committed Christian, a born-again Christian, decides to not seek his place in the body and not serve the Lord, but enjoy the benefits of the grace period because born again? What can that person expect uh, his end result be? Well, first and foremost, the person that would embark on that train of thought immediately puts himself in a position of being under the darkness influence. Mm. And his thoughts, his decisions are going to be jaded by darkness from that point on if he continues, if he makes that kind of a decision. You can never objectively come to uh, a satisfactory conclusion if you are in any way open to darkness. Uh, in the darkness element, one of the aspects of darkness is to get the individual to believe a lie. Mm -hmm. And people think that they can, uh, when they're in the darkness, that they can um, outsmart God, uh, cheat on life, get something for nothing. That's all darkness, mm -hmm. giving them an illusion.